the wacky world of Multimedia J. Yes, I'm checking out the new toy in its natural habitat, though I gotta clean up that dust behind there. <laughs> yeah, this is the one area where the vacuum robot doesn't really uh, get to you very well, but yeah, the base is definitely cleaner and tighter, and I've got the I've got the sub turned up way higher than I would normally play it at, but this should give the uh, rap kids or rap cats or mad rappers, whatever we, whatever we want to call those bass nuts up the street, a little something to consider, but even still, this is passive. It's just very well built, so it does the job very, very well. I don't hear as much stuff rattling with this sub as I did with the Ankyo, like <laughs> cranking it up to that level. That was at about half volume, and the subwoofer was at plus 12, and everything else was minus 15 decibels. So basically that's cranked at half volume, and, well, I should probably walk around outside the house see how far this goes versus what the other one could do. It is two eights accordioning each other, and after taking a look at the uh, wiring the other day, it's wired in series. appear that there is something rattling loose inside that thing that really starts rattling at 25 hertz. <laughs> yes, I do believe that this might have something to do with the rattly speaker. Yeah, um, yeah, this is the plastic cap from the relay that broke. Sound familiar? Yeah, this was still rattling loose inside the sub, so when I put some real bass to it for the first time in years, it dislodged and started uh, doing the Plinko-ish thing around until it rattled its way down through the bottom and out of the darn thing, but yeah. It's an Omron 24 volt relay, uh, 5 amp, etc, etc. Those are the statistics for it if I ever by chance want to get a replacement. But basically, yeah, uh, this is what came off in my hand and then the connector thingy wouldn't work afterwards, so... So as you can see, this, this horrible little plastic thing, and I've since read in some service literature about the ProMedia Ultra 5.1s that these power relays were a known failure point in the amplifier. Funny how that works! Then again, the fart box, aka Refurb, still works all these years later. Again, funny how that works. Uh-oh, Louie, I don't think I'm gonna make it! Yeah, I used a lot of that speaker wire off of that spool that had been sitting around for the longest time. I got sick of the slimy insulation and that so-called, or that membrane something or another, whatever it was that Monster Cable called, that disintegrating sticky plastic coating around the copper on the wires. So when you try to get a fresh piece of copper to rewire the darn thing, uh, to rewire the speakers. It didn't really work very well now, did it? Yeah, it didn't. So, yeah, anyways, I used up most of the spool hooking up some fresh copper to the, uh, the, the main system, and it sounds great now. Uh, I guess there must have been some resistance from the oxidation on the copper contacts and the tinning that I attempted to do, but basically now, it, uh, it, I basically spent a lot of time this evening just putting everything at zero for neutral response to all the frequencies and listening, just 
Yeah, I didn't want to stop listening to music. That says a lot with a speaker system. I mean, when I was uh, growing up, and when I was growing up, and I was listening to a good pair of headphones, it was one thing. But now I've got the ability to do this live, so to speak, with a hack job speaker system like this. <laughs> <sighs> yes, indeed. That was most certainly fun, 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 as Rebecca Black would put it with her alliteration of the word fun. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, I used up some of that speaker wire. So, assuming I don't want to clean up around here and maybe put those uh, Logitech speakers in the back back together, I think the Ankyo sub might be part of my next mod project because I tried double subs with this and the Klipsch hooked up in parallel. The impedance doesn't match though, basically, so this one's louder than the other one. This one has a lower impedance. This is made for a 6 ohm system and the Klipsch thing actually is two sixes wired in series from the looks of it. It was giving about 12 uh, ohms of resistance when I checked the terminals. I realize that's DC resistance on an ohm meter and not necessarily impedance, but Basically, this thing just, it came with the sound system, there's thinner, it's the wood-like substance that makes up the cabinet seems thinner on this, and overall, I'm not a big fan of ported stuff. I think porting is kind of like an echoey poof box compared to a subwoofer that's a little more subtle and doesn't turn into a fart machine if you put the right amount of air through the port at the right volume and things like that. You know, kind of like what happened with the old 4.1s down there. But anyways... So the next thing to do with this, I wonder if there's a way that I could uh, soften the bass on this thing. Because it's a total boomy poof box with, uh, I don't know if there's even anything in it as far as any kind of padding or foam or something, but it would be nice if I could find a way to at least get some level of parity going between this thing and the Klipsch. Because the Klipsch is just far and away, I mean, the, the bass is deeper and cleaner and it sounds more like the subwoofer does his job a lot better on the clip end of things, even with a broken ProMedia sub, compared to this thing that actually came with the home theater. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a passive, and I rewired the Klipsch to be a passive because the amp is broken, but just the design, the thicker wood on the box, the better design for the airflow, and I think it's a bandpass box or something along those lines, but the better design for the, uh, the, the airflow. It's not just, oh, let's put a little port in it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not just an echoey poof box, and so it's it's a deeper, tighter bass, and it's a lot more natural. And it does what subwoofers are supposed to do, make it sound like they're not there. It shouldn't sound like you have speakers in a sub when you have your system properly tuned. The sub should be the lower, non-directional frequencies, 80 hertz and below, and it should basically sound like a really good pair of stereo speakers if you do 2.1. Sadly, the kids don't like that. They just want bass, bass, and more bass. <laughs> I suppose that's fun for a little gimmick when you can get stuff rattling on the shelves in the kitchen from out in the living room, but uh, eventually it gets old, and you want to start listening to, you know, the rest of the frequency something or another. Yeah, so anyways. I'm curious if I can mod this thing to make it not so boomy. I mean, this is probably your entry-level one-note sub or whatever it is right here. It does, fortunately, have a real subwoofer speaker of at least eight inches. We know that much, and of course we have seen it flip coins and things like that. It's not like those echo boxes with the that hide the tiny woofers inside an echoey wood box. So. The real question now is, how are we going to get this thing to at least be in the ballpark of the Klipsches? Because the Klipsches are far better at what they do than this thing is. So I can't justify hooking this thing up while it's in it, the state that it's in, because the minute I do, everything gets all boomy. It's, the, the bass isn't boomy with the Klipsch box. The minute I rig this thing back up, even if it's in parallel, it's uh, it just takes over and it's boomy and not too desirable, especially if it's in a corner. Typical sub, typical newbie subwoofer is this here. I'm gonna give you an idea of how light it is. It's light enough that you can actually pick it up with one hand by grabbing it with the port, uh, by grabbing it by the port. So it'll be worth uh, fiddling with to see what I can do with this thing. But you can only polish um, entry level stuff so much. It's a, it might actually be more worth it, though, to put some of this stuff that's apart back together before I start doing anything with this. I don't want to have a junk bin going here. I'm especially curious 
about what those crappy speakers would sound like if I re-soldered them up with 16 gauge. <laughs> that would be something. <laughs> Pearls before swine, yes, but have all the internal wiring go from that stuff to 16 gauge and see if there's any kind of sound difference whatsoever. That should be fun to play around with. <laughs> Uh, kind of a little awkward. It would appear that there is something rattling loose inside that thing that really starts rattling at 25 hertz. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that was kind of awkward, folks, seeing this, uh, that clip is a quicko flick, but I just couldn't just keep that under wraps, you know, so a little out of order on things, but whatever. Anyway, so um, because I, you know, because it's a big speaker video and stuff like that, all the related videos are V Westlife, blah, 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 etc. So him, you know, messing with old stereos and things along those lines. So maybe I should be watching me some videos instead of... <laughs> so I think we know where we're going from here. Modding, modding, modding. Get those speakers rewired, things along those lines. Play around with some stuff, have some fun. And then see if I can do something about that boomy poof box that Ankyo sub over there. For now though, here's one of the Towers of Power wishing you a good night or whatever. <laughs> right, that's enough tinkering with electronics for now. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.